Hello, I'm former Congressman Joe Dioguardi, the president of the Albanian American Civic League, and I'm here standing in Tirana, the capital of Albania. This is my seventh trip here, and let me now thank the uh, members of the Albanian American Civic League and the board members of the league for making these many trips uh, possible, uh, certainly this trip today. I'm here with uh, a delegation uh, representing uh, three congressional committees, the Armed Services Committee of the United States uh, Congress, the House of Representatives, uh, the uh, Committee on Unconventional Warfare and Terrorism, and the Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, we've come here on a fact-finding mission. Uh, we're going to be meeting with the President of Albania, Dr. Sally Berisha. Uh, we're going to be meeting with the President of the Parliament of Albania, uh, Pieter Abnori. Uh, we're going to meet with the people um, representing the Defense uh, Ministry and uh, the military advisor to the President, uh, uh, Colonel Adam Chirpani. Uh, it is important that we get the information we need to convince the United States Congress to help Dr. Berisha, because he's asked us to do this, to make a good case so that Albania becomes a full member of NATO as soon as possible, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. It's important for Albania to be able to be secure, militarily secure, in this part of the world because of the problems that we see in Bosnia. And because of its economic problems, it needs help. As a full member of NATO, there will be many advantages not only to Albania, but for the geopolitical peace and stability of this region in the Balkans. Uh, we're also going tomorrow to Macedonia. We'll be meeting with uh, leaders of the government, with President uh, Gligorov, because we want to make the case that the one million Albanians in Macedonia deserve full national rights and equal recognition with all the other members of that multi-ethnic state. And specifically, we're going to talk about the census that must be conducted right away. You'll also uh, be seeing a rally that we'll have here uh, in Skanderbeg Square. Uh, and. Um, there are many things that you're going to see that I think you'll be happy with. Please continue to support my efforts and the Albanian American Civic League. Thomas Jefferson said that information is the currency of democracy, so this is in the highest tradition of America. Please help us continue to get the information to Congress and the rest of the world about the Albanian nation of seven million people, a divided nation here in the Balkans that needs to be better understood and needs the help of the United States of America. Thank you. We just had a wonderful meeting uh, with uh, President Sali Berisha and uh, the representatives of three important congressional offices in New York. Ron Phillips uh, representing uh, Congressman Duncan Hunter and the House uh, Republican Task Force. Uh, we had also uh, Vaughn Forrest representative representing Congressman McCollum, uh, he's on the committee, the chairman of the Committee of, on Unconventional Warfare and Terrorism. Uh, and uh, we also had uh, Paul Behrens representing uh, Dana Rohrbacher, uh, co-chairman of Project Freedom. Uh, this congressional delegation came here as a fact-finding mission to know more about Albania, especially the uh, security situation here vis-a-vis -vis what's going on in the Balkans to report back to Congress, both Democrats and Republicans. Uh, and um, I've asked uh, President Berisha to summarize uh, in his own words uh, some of the key points made at that uh, rather long meeting that lasted well over a half hour. Again, Dr. Berisha, thank you for uh, making the time on such thank short you. notice thank to be with us. Much. First, I'd like to thank you for the uh, interest and I'm very encouraged by the greater interest that United States are showing to the settlement of the crisis in the region and to assist Albania in this uh, very difficult uh, situation. To my opinion, the situation remains still very dangerous because if the United States and NATO will stop the conflict in Bosnia, dictators and criminals which are terrorizing this peninsula has no reason to stop on their ambition plans in creating greater Serbia and I think that a Balkan war will be very probable if they will shift the conflict to the very south. In this respect, 
I do consider crucial, vital, a stronger attitude adopted by the United States. Because even during these two or three months, whenever the United States get adopted a stronger attitude, the situation have had some change. Let's take only the, the last uh, example of decision of air, air strike by NATO, and this, war, this uh, gave the a relief to the besiege of Sarajevo. But uh, another uh, very important issue that should be considered is the full membership of Albania in NATO. Albania is working hard with, uh, un with all international community to prevent the conflict here. But I think uh, applying for uh, Albania, uh, approving Albania as a full member, that means increasing the stability in this destabilized region. And uh, bilateral cooperation with the United States in this respect will be also very important because despite huge difficulties, for us the first priority is to prevent the conflict and to save peace and security in the region. Thank you. Uh, we also spoke uh, about the issue of the Albanians in Macedonia, and uh, uh, we, we noted to the congressional delegation that Albania was one of the first to recognize the independence of Macedonia as long as they would recognize the full national rights of the Albanians there. And you know, and with your help and cooperation, we're going to Macedonia uh, very shortly because we want to be sure that the government there knows the importance of the census that has to be taken to establish exactly how many Albanians are in this multi-ethnic state. It's not a Slavic state, as you know. I think that uh, one of the most important problems that Macedonia should be solved is the sen sensing the population. This census will give full transparency on the ethnical situation in this republic. And I think that the sense of the population will work for the stability of this state. We are very in favor of independence and stability of Macedonia. But Macedonia herself should work for her stability and recognizing the human and national rights of Albanians, which rep represents most probably one third of the population there. And, uh, I am very optimist about the future of relations between Albania and Macedonia. These small states could work together, could cooperate together. We have many projects, and I think we will give the, a very good example of the cooperation and good neighborhood in the near future. Well, I guess the only other point that I would mention, because it always is in our hearts, is the issue of Kosovo, and we feel so badly that uh, the Serbs uh, don't even allow people to come in. They keep saying it's part of Serbia when 92% of the population is Albanian. It makes us sick uh, in the United States, as I'm sure it makes you. Any thoughts that you would have on Kosovo would be welcome. I think that uh, Kosovo is the region which is living under total Serbian occupation. And uh, I should mention also that the crisis of Balkans started in Kosovo. Started the day when the Milosevic fasted uh, Gazemistan as a victory, which was the defeat. And without solving this question, there will be no, not a real solution of the Balkan crisis. In this respect, I think that the increasing control of the United Nations in the region is very important for a future solution, for prevention of the conflict and a future solution, which could be fine respecting the human and national rights of Albanians without changing borders through force. Under the Milosevic control, Albanians are facing the most oppressive regime. And uh, I think that 
it will be very useful and important to link, at least to link, the embargo to Serbia with also with the situation in Kosovo. Otherwise, Milosevic will not accept, will not tolerate the minimum of the human and national rights of Albanians in this republic. Well, you've said it many times that the best hope for the Albanian nation of seven million, a divided nation, is an economically stable Albania. Uh, and I know as president of Albania, your first concern is to create stability here so that you put your people to work, you create investment opportunities, jobs. This, I, I guess, has to be uh, pressing on your mind all the time. And I know that you're anxiously uh, uh, working on a conference in November to attract investors, uh, not only Albanian diaspora, but others here to introduce them to the opportunities, the many good opportunities to make investments and to create jobs and make profits in Albania. Um, I think we would end this with this last question because I would want the people in the United States to hear from you personally why you think Albania is a good investment and why this is so important to you as a democratic uh, president of this great democratic republic. I think Albania uh, represents, in, in, uh, represents also enormous uh, facilities and possibilities for foreign investment. Albania has so many natural resources, uh, skillful labor forces, re relatively well educated, young one, very advantageous as a market, and we have now a very liberal legislation which favorizes not only the repatriation of capitals but also the repatriation of profits and uh, in Albania is doing great efforts to share the same principles as the United States and other democratic countries in, in their countries. And that means all these factors represent uh, uh, facilities and possibilities of Albania for foreign investment. Wonderful. Well, thank you. As I said thank you. before from Fanoli, Moski, Friki, Sekid, Vlazem, Thank you. Thank you very much. Albanian people maybe are the only people in the world where half of the people lives within the borders and the other half lives around its borders. There are other peoples who have their people living, more people living outside their territories. But uh, with us, wherever we go in our border, in Macedonia, in Montenegro, we don't encounter Slavs, Serbs, but we encounter Albanians. This was an injustice committed to us by history. And now, bearing in mind the Helsinki spirit, we have accepted that we will abide by its principles for not changing the borders with force. But this does not prevent us at all from protecting and upholding the human and national rights of Albanian, wherever of Albanians, wherever they are living in the former Yugoslavia. Indeed, even in Greece. Because the Greece is the one who shouts more. And there are many, many Albanians there who don't have any rights. The Albanian people have been inspired by the Helsinki, Copenhagen, Keres principles and charters. But with regret, I can tell you that those who taught us these principles, though we knew, we were, we were aware of many of them, but we couldn't implement them in practice. So those who taught us these principles, now it seems as if they have forgotten them. 
And they've come out. And so the former as old alliances have appeared, have come to the core. And they have put not a transparent surface to the principles of human rights. For but as you know, the big orphan has a right to do what the small cannot do. Because much was spoken all over the world about war criminals, like Milosevic, about Karadzic and others. And they are being welcomed, honored, and even awarded medals. Indeed, they sometimes are regarded as messengers of peace. And personally, I'm convinced that even those who call them such do not trust them. But it, it is in their interest and it is for the sake of those alliances which have begun to appear in Europe. Uh, there is one thing I can tell you, John. When the first demonstrations began in Albania, the main slogan, slogan was, let us make Albania like Europe. Because actually, we are in Europe, we are part of the West, spiritually, geographically and historically. For but for you to have a better view of history, we have always trusted the United States of America as the champion of the free world. Because it has done so not only in words, but it also by means by using force when necessary against the empire of the evil. Sometimes I repeat that when we were in prison, we prisoners, you know, were divided in two groups. Some, one group was called, was called the Americans, and the other group, our opponents, were called the Russians. Neither were Americans or Russians, but it was a different, the different interests which clashed. The majority of the prisoners dreamt of, of freedom and democracy. Whereas another part dreamt of changing only the main leader and nothing more. Now, as you know, many things have changed. We live in democracy now, and we are building the rule of law. We are conducting a foreign policy directed by our parliament. And it's not others who impose upon us how to conduct our foreign policy. And for the first time in our history, we have come to the defense of Albanians living in Kosovo, in Macedonia, and in Montenegro, in their own territories. And it's important that they are living in their own territories. We are not going to go back into the centuries, but it is known that the Slavs came to the Balkans at a later time, whereas the Albanian people are among the most ancient people of the Balkans. Unfortunately, as one of our poets says, we have had the, ser the serpent in our hearts and the devil as our neighbor. And this was our misfortune. The Slavs used to occupy our lands. 
And if we resist to them by force, they said, well, it's a misunderstanding. If we did not resist to them as, as it was necessary, then they could take hold, get hold of our property. And they said, well, let's get down to, to negotiations now. And negotiate, they offered to us the very thing that they had plundered from us. And no matter how much we disputed over that, the most we could get was half of what they had planned. And they cried out that they were making sacrifices for the sake of peace. This is an old centuries old method used by Slavs regarding the question of penetration <laughs> into <laughs> Europe and mainly what is of interest to us in Albania. Who is it in Bosnia right now? Unfortunately, you are well aware of events taking place in Bosnia. Was, much was spoken about the martyr people of Bosnia, about the violation of the Helsinki principles, and after all, they are bringing pressure to bear upon them either to accept a small peace or to lose everything. And the Albanian question is not the Bosnian question. We are a far greater people in number. We are about 7 million Albanians all around. And there are Albanian communities, uh, strong Albanian communities all over the world. And we would never want to become like Bosnia, and I don't hope that we will let ourselves become a second Bosnia. But we still have divided and resorted to peaceful methods. We have ask for the blue helmets to come or the NATO troops to come to Kosovo. We have never said that we want to uh, unite Alba Kosovo to Albania. Though you must know that we are one, one nation. Well, it's a fact that we are in difficult position. Do you think it stands to reason that 92% of the Albanian people living in, in Kosovo be regarded as a minority? And only 8% are the Serbs be considered as a majority? This is where the, the evil, so say, the problem begins. If is led to do his work piece by piece and put Europe before the accomplished fact, then it is a danger greater than for Yugoslavia. Frankly speaking, sir, it's my opinion that Europe is used to pulling out the, the, uh, the, chest, the chestnuts out of fire with the other's hands. As well with the American's hands. First, let me say how happy I am to be uh, 
in Albania for the seventh time. I came here first with Congressman Tom Lantos in 1990 to try to open the doors of Albania because I felt it was important that our motherland, uh, Shipria, uh, be democratic and strong so that we can then have a foundation to help the Albanian nation in Kosovo, the Albanians in Macedonia and the Albanians in Montenegro, and that's what I am continuing to do. Uh, I'm, I'm proud to be here as a Albanian, but I'm also here as a concerned American, and I'm here as president of the Albanian American Civic League, and I'm happy to have one of our executive committee members and founders, Muslim Kuka, who is here with me on this delegation. Uh, and we are, uh, we came here uh, just yesterday to spend two days in Albania. We brought the chiefs of staff of three congressional offices from the Congress of the United States of America for a fact-finding trip in order to help understand uh, the situation of Albania uh, and tell the American Congress why Albania needs to be a full member of NATO right away. That is the purpose of this trip. Okay, well, we're going to spend two days in Albania, but tomorrow we leave for Macedonia because it's important to help the one million Albanians in Macedonia achieve full national rights in that multi-ethnic state. So we will be meeting with Gligorov on Monday because we want to see a census. We want to see a true count for how many Albanians are in Macedonia so that uh, they can get proportional representation and equality with the Macedonians there. But the Albanians in Macedonia are a big concern. The Albanians in Kosovo are a big concern, and the national security of Albania is a big concern. And the question you ask about peace in the Balkans, uh, I would say this, that the situation right now is very dangerous for Albanians because we have seen that the European community, that NATO and the United Nations is not doing enough to show Slobodan Milosevic its determination and resolve to fight against aggression. If the plan in Bosnia is to break up Bosnia into three ethnic republics or provinces, uh, it is a very dangerous plan and a dangerous precedent for the Albanian people because it would show that aggressors like Milosevic, Karacic, are able to draw the borders, new borders, with violence and blood and aggression. This is against Helsinki. This is against all of the UN uh, principles uh, for peace and self-determination. And it should not be agreed to by Izabegovic. Now, when you mention the trip of Kracic to Athens, it shows me that we still face a big danger because I believe it was Mitsotakis who said that Serbia and Greece share a common border. Now, what does that mean? That means that maybe they think that Macedonia should not be recognized as an independent state and maybe Serbia should take part of uh, Macedonia, Bulgaria should take part of Macedonia, and Greece should take part of Macedonia. That to me would not only be wrong, because we've already, the world has recognized Macedonia as an independent state, Albania has recognized it, uh, but it would be wrong because then it would create a very big problem for the Albanian people. Then the security of the Albanian nation, the seven million Albanians in the Balkans, would be even at greater risk. And Albania 
as a sovereign state would be at greater risk because we don't know if Milosevic then wants to maybe do something with the country of Albania. We already see that Greece is saying that there should be autonomy for the Greeks in the southern part of Albania. What does this mean? It means that the national security of Albania is a big problem. And that is why this trip with the three congressional offices here in Albania is very important. Shumar and Si. I met with uh, Barisha yesterday and Abnori, and today the congressional delegation is meeting with uh, Adam Chapani and meeting with the uh, general staff. We're going to see the military bases, uh, the Air Force, uh, the helicopter squadron, uh, Endurus to the naval base, uh, to make a report to Congress on how much more weapons and, and, and new technology the military of Albania needs and why it's important to support Albania as a full NATO member right away. Because if we have NATO membership here, then the geopolitics and security of this region will be more secure. Mendimi dominant i klasës të marë politikë amerikane, është në harmoni me mendimin tuaj personal? Well, that is why I am here, because many of them don't know what to think. They are confused. They don't have enough information. This is such a complicated issue, the Albanian national cause, that they need to know more about Albania and to know more about the Albanians outside of Albania. But right now, what they need to know is that Albania, as a democratic state, needs to be strong economically and militarily if it is to be a rock of peace or a uh, foundation for peace in the Balkans. This is the discussion we had with Barisha yesterday, and he agrees 100% that we must make Albania more stable, and we must show Milosevic that Albania has the ability to defend itself so that he will not do something stupid and try to do something uh, against Albania or the Albanians in Kosovo or the Albanians in Macedonia. So the people in Congress now need more information. They are confused. They, there is too much propaganda from the Serbs and the, the Greeks uh, so that we need to get them the truth. Thomas Jefferson, one of the founders of the United States of America, said that information is the currency of democracy. So when you have information, you can have a better democracy. Uh, that is true for the United States and is true for Albania. So I hope that I can play a role as a proud Albanian and as president of the Albanian American Civic League to bring the facts to the United States Congress so that they support Albania's membership in NATO right away and that we help Albania upgrade its military forces because the weapons here are very old. They still have Chinese and Russian planes and boats and tanks. Uh, and that is not enough when Milosevic has the most modern equipment. We saw what happened in Bosnia. We don't want to see what happened in Bosnia happen here in Macedonia and Albania. So it's a very good question, and I will continue to work specifically on this issue because President Barisha asked me many months ago, he says, Joe, whatever you do, please lobby the United States Congress and the world if you can so that Albania becomes a full member of NATO right away because it's important for NATO, it's important for Albania, it's important for the peace in the Balkans. Thank you. <laughs> happy to be here in Albania again. This is my seventh
trip, and you can be sure that I will be making many more to help my father's people, my people. And before I go any further, let me say that uh, this trip would not be possible without the support of many people uh, in America who want to help Albania, but in particular, we have a board of the Albanian American Civic League, and Ms. Kuka made sure that he made a very good contribution so we could come to make this trip. So I appreciate my friend Ms. Kuka for what he Two reasons. When I was here the last time, when the Pope was here, President Barisha said the most important thing was to make Albania a full member of NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So I brought the congressional delegation here to take the information back to Congress so we can help Albania become a full member of the United States. had a very good meeting yesterday with Dr. Barisha, uh, about an hour and a half, and um, we uh, met with Pieter Abnori, we met with Adam Chupani, uh, the advisor to the President on Military Affairs, and right now the Congressional delegation is going around by helicopter to see the naval base, the air bases, and the army so that we can report uh, that Albania needs America's help and needs the help of NATO right away to upgrade its military uh, when we go back. But at least we have three, the offices of three congressmen working with me on this trip so that they can make a very detailed report to the Congress of the United States uh, and get them to understand how important a strong Albania is to keep peace in this part of the world, in the Balkans have gotten away with literally murder with the ethnic cleansing because there was no resolution by the European community, by the United Nations, and by NATO, and the United States did not do enough. We have to be careful now that what happened in Bosnia does not repeat now in Albania or in Kosovo or in Macedonia that's why this trip is so important. Not that we are concerned with on this trip is Macedonia. Tomorrow morning I leave for Shkup. Uh, we meet with Gligorov on Monday because we <coughs> must make a very strong case to the Macedonian government that until they recognize the full national rights of the one million Albanians in Macedonia, that the United States is not going to recognize them as a republic. I see they understand English very well.